we're going to be looking at um, the creation of a, a water plane for our underwater renders. Um, we're going to look at the two different modes, which is the uh, direct stroke indirect volumetric rendering uh, material uh, setting, sorry, or the fast ocean setting. So let's have a look at where we're going to start. First of all, um, I've set up a ground material. Uh, that's quite important because, of course, we are using the global radiosity uh, render um, uh, an atmosphere model in this particular instance. Um, and that means that the color of your ground material heavily influences the way materials react within the, the render. And I've also dropped in a rock with a simple ecosystem of corals. You'll see also I've got several different cameras defined. Uh, but the main one I'm going to be looking at for this is going to be the main camera, which you can see I've set quite low down, looking up towards the top of the rock. So we'll get started by dropping in a water plane. Okay, and we'll raise it up to not, not too high because we want this to be kind of a, a shallow water effect. So let's do a quick preview render and see what we've got just by dropping in the water plane. You can see already that uh, setting up the, the ground plane material is, was quite useful because you can see the ground plane being reflected in the underside of the water. And you can see obviously that the water is behaving with transparency and, in, and illuminating our ecosystem. But we want things to be a little bit more interesting than that. So let's go ahead and look at the water material. First of all, we've got the foam on the physical water. Now the foam's going to cause us problems, we don't need to see the foam, it's just going to mess up the render in my opinion. So I'm going to move the alpha boost all the way to the left. Don't delete the foam layer because that has again another impact on the way the water is going to behave in terms of displacement, which we're going to look at in a moment. So we'll look at the transparency of the default water. So we've got a few things to look at. It's 100% transparent, which is what we want. We want it to be physical transparency. Refraction, index of re refraction about 1.33. First thing I'm going to change is I'm going to change the reflectivity just so that we can maximize the amount of detail that we see on the underside of the water. And the next thing I'm going to do, simply because it speeds up the render initially, is change to fast ocean. So what we've got to look at is the depth of penetration of the light within the water. Uh, if I remember correctly, scientifically, water uh, light pretty much runs out at about 35 meters. So 70 meters is a little bit too deep. So I'm going to drop this right down because, again, what we want to be doing is simulating some of the murkiness that we're going to see within the water. This is going to be a process of trial and error for you in your scene to determine exactly the effect that you want to reproduce. The other thing that we need to be aware of is that light within view behaves the same as it does in reality, and that is that red light is filtered out. That means that any red objects below the water level, when especially when you get to depth, practically become black and invisible. So you can set up a lovely red coral reef, but the fact that the light is being filtered by the water will mean that that red becomes grey, almost black in some instances. So just be aware of that. The other slider I want to just quickly look at is the anisotropy. Basically, all that's going to do is control how clear the water is to a certain extent. It's not a very scientific explanation, but you'll see the effect when I move this slider down to, say, about 5.5, five, 5.6. Five, five, Can you see we have this glow, this murkiness? Now, I quite like this because it, you know, we don't want to be seen too far into the distance within our scene. Seawater isn't always 100% crystal clear, certainly not when you have some depth. So we'll leave it at 0.56 for the moment. And we'll click OK. 
The next thing we want to do is, whilst the water is selected, is we want to double click on the water plane and we get some more options to play with. I'm going to go for a displaced water surface. So that's, you know, uh, basically making the, the plane three dimensional as opposed to the two dimensional plane it is at the moment. And again, to make it more interesting, I'm just going to ramp up this percentage. This is the simple way of determining our displacement. Obviously, if we untick this, we have all of these options here that are greyed out to play with. So if I untick there, we can start looking at the, the height of the water, the way, how many waves there are, the depth of the, the, uh, the coast relative to the foam or vice versa. But I'm lazy and I'm going to use the global wave control. So let's have a look at what that's done. Basically, as you can see, we have a, uh, a simulation, as it were, as to uh, how the water is now behaving. And you can see it's changed radically within our scene. And I'm just going to pull that down a wee bit more. Just make sure that the water... <coughs> excuse me. Make sure that the water isn't cutting the top of your rock off. Now you can see the reflections have changed quite considerably, but it is becoming a much more realistic representation of of how we expect seawater to behave. But more importantly, we gain access to the simulated underwater caustics. These are not physically accurate. These are a simulation. When it comes to caustics, we have to bear in mind that uh, the deeper we get, the larger the caustics become, um, almost to the point where you, you can't appreciate them because they're so large. So because we're quite shallow, I'm going to go to about, say, I don't know, 0.15, and we'll do a test render to, to see what's going on. I want them to be fairly intense. If I change it to sharpness, sometimes that can become a little bit unreal. This is all determined by you, your personal preferences, the effect that you're trying to achieve. So let's just go ahead and do a quick preview render and see how that works for us. So you can see in the preview render that we've now got the dappled light that we're expecting from a shallow water situation. You'll notice that the caustics are not um, affecting the water surface in any way, which they used to do in the old way of simulating the caustics. So let's see what other settings that we can play with. So we've looked at global wave control to get that displaced surface. We've looked at underwater caustics, and at the moment they're working quite nicely. It may be that if I change to one of my other cameras and do a quick preview render, you can see that the effect of the caustics on the floor of the, of the ocean, as it were, we've got a very hard edge. This is why I drew your attention to the settings. Again, if we go back to the sea, double click. Sharpness is not necessarily a good thing, especially if we're looking down at the sea floor. It can be a bit distracting and, and very difficult to work out what's going on in some complex scenes. So again, if I reduce that to 75% and do a preview render, you can see that the effect that we gain is a much softer um, version of caustics. And if we do a comparison between the two renders, so we had the first one, we had that almost like a swimming pool, that crispness, that sharpness of detail. And then moving through to that 75% of the caustics, we have a real difference between the two, especially, you know, we can appreciate it much more over here. Again, this is a purely aesthetic thing. I quite like the softness, um, but it's purely subjective. So the other thing we need to look at are those two different modes, essentially three different modes of um, how the water behaves in terms of the volumetrics. As I said before, we have the fast ocean and then we have the direct or indirect volumetric mode. So if we go back to our water plane and we edit and we go to the default water and the transparency and switch to direct volumetric sunlight you can see all of a sudden that the render becomes much more noisy that's because we have the um, the rays streaming through 
Um, the rays do extend render time, but sometimes they're worth it if that's the effect that you're looking for. Remember again that we're talking about uh, almost a translucency setting. You'll see that the translucency is, is no longer a viable option when we switch to uh, physical transparency. You will need to increase the quality of your rays. Plus four doesn't always do it. You can see on that render, that's at plus four, but and we're getting a certain amount of graininess still. Underwater, I suppose that's fine because we have particles, etc., et suspended in the water, so we can we can live with a degree of graininess. Um, there is always the option if you have that in the professional versions to raise your quality levels up. Um, again, this is a purely subjective uh, definition. What are you hoping to achieve from your scene? It's not always worth having the rays in. It's not always necessary. So fast ocean for me is generally the way to work. It does make life considerably easier. It renders more quickly. And then only as a final decision or a final change do I put in the, um, uh, the change to direct or indirect volumetric light. I hope you found that useful. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, please don't forget to check us out on social media and YouTube for further tips and tricks from Eon Software. Thank you. Bye-bye.